Hey guys, if you haven't already, give the video a like, subscribe to my channel, this is a what if series and I'll be doing more down the world, plus ultra. Hey guys, and welcome to what if Naruto was the reincarnation of Yujiro Hanma. So we left off with me telling you guys that this episode was going to be the tuning exams and it's very interesting about how this world is going to play out in the tuning exams. Very intellectual, very detailed, and also very epic and action packed. So I don't want to waste any of you guys time because you've been waiting for this and you wanted this, you like this series, and I'm going to keep it, go keep it going for you guys. If you like this series, I'm going to keep it going. But I'm also going to be paying attention to other series like you guys keep asking me, what if Goku landed in fairy tale? When is it coming out? It's coming. Be patient. It is coming. Give me time, please. Thank you. Now let's get into the what if. So we started what if with Kakashi Kurenai and Asuma Sensei recommending their teams for the tuning exams and Kakashi going to state that Naruto has shown some incredible skill and... I don't think the kid is afraid to kill people due to the fact that he's annihilated an entire entire Gato's army. He's he's even killed this Haku type character too. That was over there that that was helping Zabuza. So and the way he killed the two tuning brothers, it was this Genjutsu. Kakashi would go in to telling the third Hokage well about all Naruto's feats and what he's accomplished with Team 7. So the, everything would go the same way with Kakashi Ten telling the team that they were recommended for the tuning exams and Naruto and Sasuke going, well, Naruto's not there. He's basically in his room doing this right here. Yes, Naruto's doing this badass pose right here. So Naruto's in his room after getting done, working out, working his muscles, doing squats, doing related amounts of workouts that overtax his body doing everything he can to push his body to the near limit he's been in the room doing and then he finally finally dried off with a towel wiping all the sweat away and posed in this signature pose that he's doing right now and he's just in the room thinking well just meditating that's how he's meditating i guess i don't know that's probably how you do meditates and naruto's hair red hair will be somewhat long like this it will look somewhat long like this and Naruto's not this jacked. Not, not yet. He's not this jacked yet. So Naruto would hear a knock at the door and he would bring his legs in fast the same way Yujiro did it in the Baki series. And while he had a toothpick in his mouth, he would spit the toothpick out and flip in the air and break the t shatter the toothpick with just one swipe of his heel kick and then land on the ground. And this is where he say, come in, as Sasuke came in and said, Looking at Naruto's body, he's be surprised at how ripped a twelve this Naruto is. Like, Jesus Christ! And so Naruto would ask Sasuke, "What do you want? Don't you see I'm training right now?" And Sasuke would tell Naruto that we were we've been recommended for the tuning exams. So Naruto said, "What? Oh, the tuning exams? Is that where we get promoted to the rank of tuning? Hmm, this sounds very very interesting." All right, let me get dressed. So Naruto would get dressed in his orange shirt, black pants, and reg like the same shoes as Yujiro Hama. And this is where Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura would go and attempt the tuning exams. So everything would play out until the point where they get to that whole Genjutsu thing with Sakura, well, Sasuke breaking the Genjutsu, and now they're past it, like the tuning brothers. Like, well, let's say it like this. When he met the two tuning up there, Naruto walked up to them and said, if you don't move, I will move you myself. And Naruto, with one glare, just like sent fear through their body and they moved aside. All of a sudden, Naruto just propped up against the wall and leaned against it and just saying, huh, I wonder how many of these kids here are strong. Well, how many of these Genin here are strong? As Rock Lee would come up and, but he, he would hear about Naruto's feats. He would hear uh, how Naruto bested Guy Sensei, even Kakashi. He would hear that Naruto successfully defeated Zabuza Momochi in a hand-to-hand -hand combat. And even a skilled assassin, well, Anbu member, I think something like that, Haku, a skilled Kekagenkai user, defeated her too. 
Rock Lee would challenge Naruto saying, Naruto, I challenge you now. And this is where Sasuke and Sakura will look at Rock Lee and tell him that is not a battle that you want. Please. They like they shake in their head saying, This don't don't fight Naruto. And like this is not something you want to get into. And Rock Lee is ignoring them with Naruto's hair floating up into this like his hair just floating up and him crunching his knuckles, basically cracking them and looking at Rock Lee as he smiles and saying, really, you want to fight me right here? Are you sure about that? And Rock Lee saying, I want to show you that my moves are way better than yours. And he's saying, hmm, all right, well, let's see. Can you handle this speed as naruto would throw a raging flying kick similar to how rock lee's speed is when he takes off the weights rock lee gets kicked by this dead in the ribs and sent flying into a near wall rock lee didn't expect naruto's like speed to be moving that fast rock lee instantly recovers and goes to attack naruto and naruto's basically dodging well rock lee's throwing a bunch of kicks punches and everything and naruto's just moving his hand in each place that naruto well rock lee throws a kick or a punch basically blocking each and every attack that rock lee throws at him then naruto with a flick of his finger hits rock lee upside the head basically basically knocking him off balance and then throwing a front kick to rock lee's chest the center of his chest sending him back into another wall this time rock lee is scathed from this like he's damaged he can feel like from this and he's getting up barely as he's bleeding and he's damaged well battle damage let's say it like that and naruto standing over him saying you are exceptionally weak to be challenging someone like me do you not know the person that trains you i defeated so what makes you think you can beat me Naruto would walk past Rock Lee with Team 7 following behind him. And this is where Naruto would just stop and say, Hmm. I know you're strong, Rock Lee, in your own right. Not in any of class of mine, at least. You're possibly in a class of prey. No, that's too much for you. I would say you're a, a cub. A little baby cub compared to me. If you want to grow stronger or attempt to even stand a chance to me, you have to go through mind-boggling training like I have. Otherwise, you're just going to remain weak. And Naruto walks off. Now, everything goes the same way, but Naruto's not struggling like he did in the exams arc. And that all plays out exactly normal. So, Naruto and Team 7 would be at the Force of Death with Anko busting through like she did in the canon version. And this is where they would, she would go to explain the Force of Death. Naruto would be talking and he would be excited, crushing, clenching his fist and smiling, saying, This is something I've been waiting for, just to test out just how strong I've gotten over the years. As Naruto was, like, talking, he was talking out loud. And Anko was getting very, like, she was getting annoyed. He wasn't too loud, but he was talking to her where a person could hear him. And Anko would get annoyed and throw a kunai, which Naruto would catch and basically crush in his hand. And this is where Naruto would appear in front of Anko and saying, Oh, so you like to throw weapons. Do you want to fight? Anko would feel a sweat as she feels the lust from this kid, like the bloodlust from this kid when she just threw a kunai and the amount of strength it took for Naruto just to crush the kunai into dust. Yeah, that's a scary feat. Anko would throw a jab at Naruto, basically saying, you need to shut up so I can explain the tune, the forest of death. And Naruto would catch her fist and she would feel a crunching motion as Naruto's grip would get harder. And she would just instantly, like, she would... Well, wince in pain as he would let her fist go. He would say, carry on. I'll be quiet. But the next time you throw something like that at me, you better be prepared to have my fist meet your face. Then Naruto would turn and walk away. So the tuning, everything would go the same way. And now the tuning exams would begin. So Sasuke, Naruto, and Sasuke, well, Sasuke, Naruto, and Sakura would be in the woods with Naruto saying, you three, you two, I have to take a piss. He would go and take a piss and something out of a well would attack Naruto with him basically killing it very, very easily. Naruto would walk back to his teammates and they would go out to retrieve scrolls, sort of similar how they did in the original version. 
Now, this time, that big-ass snake that tried to swallow Naruto, well, it wouldn't have that much of an outcome this time, as Naruto used some of the Ninetales chakra. So he, so he strengthened himself up with the Ninetales chakra and did a huge punch to the snake and sent it to the ground, basically with a hole in his head. Naruto didn't know that measures of his strength right now. I mean, he did, but Amp with the Ninetales chakra, it's like saying, wow, I think I need to hold back just a little bit. So this is where Orochimaru would come into the picture, and this is where Sasuke and Sakura would be instilled with fear, basically put up under a genjutsu that they fell for, and they, everything would play out the same way with Sasuke stabbing himself, with Naruto watching, seeing Sasuke's resolve. Sakura, on the other hand, was stuck in a genjutsu to Naruto, had to lightly tap her on her neck, basically knocking her out cold, and then saying to himself, well, saying out loud, aren't you a genjutsu specialist? How can you not have broken that? Uh, no matter. This guy in front of us seems very strong. So what are you going to do? Are you going to sit there and piss your pants? Or are you going to fight? Naruto gets excited and he asks him, who are you? And the person in mysterious person says, right, it's none of your business who I am. All I know is I'm here to kill you two. Well, three and take your scrolls. Naruto says, is that so? So you want to fight? And, this, well, as we know, I'm Orochimaru, and as, as I'm going to keep calling him, he says, yes, I do want to fight. Naruto lifts his hands in the air, and his shirt begins to rip off of him, revealing his demon back. Naruto's eyes grow slit-like, and Naruto cracks his knuckles and say, you better be prepared, because I don't hold back. Naruto rushed Orochimaru very fast. Orochimaru got kicked dead in the neck, basically breaking his neck, and then flipped. Naruto flipped over and kicked Orochimaru dead in the top of his head, sending him and the snake down to the ground with a huge thud and a plume of smoke just going everywhere with rocks. Naruto would lightly hit the ground and rush at Orochimaru, basically sending off a combo of attacks, right hooks, kicks, front kicks, side kicks, everything you can see that are hitting Orochimaru. Orochimaru is coughing up blood. Then he does this little snake where he comes out of his mouth and everything. But Naruto instantly grabs Orochimaru by the hair and slams him to the ground and stomps him in the face, saying, I thought you were strong. You're very weak as he delivers a strong kick to Orochimaru's rib cage, basically cracking about two or three ribs and sending Orochimaru flying through trees. Sasuke can't believe what's going on as Naruto is basically manhandling this guy that just came out of nowhere. Sasuke can't let Naruto have all the fun as Sasuke rushed in and delivered some taijutsu to Orochimaru on his own right but Orochimaru basically swatted Sasuke away but Sasuke dodged a few of his attacks but delivering a kick to Orochimaru's chin sending him upwards and Naruto jumping up in the air and delivering a thunderous kick to Orochimaru's spinal cord. Orochimaru felt nothing but a shock wave of pain just immediate through his body as he fell to the ground. Orochimaru would try his best jutsus or try something that he can to subdue Naruto. So basically what he he has an idea. Basically if I do the five prom seal, I can seal that boy's nine tails chakra away. It will I mean, basically knock him out cold. But so Naruto sticks his tongue out and wraps it around Naruto. Only Naruto just grabs the tongue and cuts it off. And Orochimaru screams in pain as that fucking hurt. So Naruto is rushing at Orochimaru, sending off another barrage of attacks with Sasuke following up with a fireball jutsu. Orochimaru is backed into a corner. He can barely, I mean, barely handle Naruto. And for a guinea, a guinea to be this strong? Yes, Orochimaru didn't expect this. Orochimaru didn't anticipate this. As Sasuke and Naruto are delivering a ferocious amount of attacks towards Orochimaru. And he can barely fend them off. Naruto was a problem. Now Sasuke's adding to the mix with his Sharingan. Yeah, I have to get out of here. So Orochimaru quickly tries to bite Sasuke's neck. But Naruto steps on it and looks at Orochimaru. And he crushes his neck, like tw twists his foot. And you can hear the bone cracking in Orochimaru's neck before he does the same thing again. And this time Orochimaru just says, screw it, I have to retreat, and gets out of dodge. 
with Naruto basically trying to catch Orochimaru, but he disappeared, concealing his presence. And Naruto would just get mad. He would grind his teeth and stomp the forest ground, basically making like a small earthquake or making it tremble. So other ninjas would feel it. Naruto would pick up the unconscious Sakura and put her on his shoulder as he looks at Sasuke and smiles and, say, and says to Sasuke, You know, one of these days, I want to fight you just to see just how strong you are. It seems that your eyes have been learning a few things about me, Sasuke. Hmm, you might just be a potential rival someday. So let's go, let's get back to this main front and get out of this godforsaken forest. As Naruto basically, well, wiped, his, wiped the blood off his fist and onto his pants as they're walking in now, that's it for the Forest of Death arc. So the same thing doesn't happen because, well, they're in that little area and everything where Orochimaru, yes, okay, so let's say this. Orochimaru had his little ninja come there and, well, Sasuke, the, on this time, he tells Naruto that he can handle this one. And Naruto basically sits down and says, go right ahead. I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got. So not Sasuke easily takes like battles all three of them and beats them down with the skills that he's adapted see Sasuke has been watching I'm not saying has he, he hasn't been watching he's been very absorbing observant over Naruto and his skills and everything I'm not going to say that he's on Naruto's level but he's been very observant learning a few tricks here and there so Sasuke with the level that he's at right now and I would say he has three Tomoe in one eye and two Tomoe in the other eye so Sasuke's making quick work of these three sound ninja very easily even going as far as to destroying the person air cannons while breaking his arms like he did in the way original cannon except for Sasuke has full mental control of what he's doing and seeing how brutal Naruto is Naruto would have complimented Sasuke on that mark so Sasuke has his foot arched into the parent person's back and broke both of his arms saying well, you can't use these air cannons if both of your arms are broken. And then he kicks the boy, the man in the head and sends him to the ground unconscious. The girl and, well, the other guy, whatever their names were, were very shocked or scared. They felt fear as to the fact that Orochimaru was basically describing that Sasuke is not the only, well, Naruto is not the only one there. Well, let's put it like this. Your main target is Sasuke, but be wary because there's another boy there there's another tuning well not tuning getting there that is quite strong possibly on the level of a kage sasuke would look at them and say well are you next and this is where naruto would glance at the two with just like motionless eyes and it would send shields down their spine to them making them well forcefully making them to retreat so that went just like that so now we're in the preliminaries arc and that was part three to what if Naruto was, what if Naruto was Yujiro's reincarnation? Now, let's get into part four of what if Naruto was Yujiro's, uh, what if Naruto was Yujiro's reincarnation? So, we start the preliminaries arc, and because it was too many people and too many people passed, so we start the preliminaries arc with Naruto, well, Sasuke versus that one guy, whatever his name was, I can't remember. Do correct me in the comments. But Sasuke easily bodies this guy in a more Naruto fashion with Sasuke basically beating him down. Well, the man would throw like a chakra fist at Sasuke and Sasuke would dodge it, basically delivering a right hook to the man's jawline, then followed by an uppercut, then followed by a left kick. Just to make sure, the man would fall down on the ground unconscious and Sasuke would walk away. Sasuke, Naruto would take very well adapt to this, raising his eyebrows, seeing that Sasuke has been training in some martial arts and he's been pushing himself. We flash back to a point where Nar Sasuke is very like conflicted with how strong Naruto's getting. So what Na Sasuke does is he focuses more on taijutsu, a lot, a heavy amount of taijutsu, increasing his speed, skills, and all that. That's the only thing that Sasuke's been focusing on training in. He's been doing a lot of like, some ninjutsu, say for example, lightning, like Chindori very early on. Well, Kakashi was teaching him Chindori very early on, but he hasn't mastered it yet. And fireball jutsu and such and such. But 
Sasuke has been focused on Taijutsu and everything. In this part, Sasuke doesn't have the curse mark because I didn't want to give it to him. Because in this anime, he's not, I mean, well, in this what if, he's not going to need it. Anyway, so we get back to the story with the next battle being that of Sakura versus Ino. And that plays out the same way it did in canon. Only to the fact, well, it just plays out the same way it did in canon. But Naruto has a crush on Ino. Just keep that in mind. And I don't think Hinata... I should... Let me know in the comments in the below. Do you guys want Naruto to have Hinata and Ino? Or do you just want it to be Ino? Just Ino. I'm going to vote it up. I'm going to put the poll after I do this last part. And then that's it. Anyway, so Naruto would go against Kiba. And this is what Kiba would say. Yeah, Naruto, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to win. And then I'm going to move on to the finals. And this is where Naruto would say, have you not heard? And uh, Kiba would go to the comments saying, oh, yeah, I've heard a lot about you, Naruto. I know about your feats. I know about your skills. I know what you accomplished and what you did. But me and Akamaru, we're going to beat you here now to prove that we're strongest and we're the top dog. So, Naruto, fight me. And Naruto's hair would float up as he would do the similar face that he did against well, Retsu when he got mad because he ripped off his master's face. Similar to that face. I got to show you just like this, like this right here. So it would be similar to how Naruto's looking right now. And Naruto's hair would float up as he would get into a fighting stance with his arms lifted up into the air. Similar to the just Yujiro pose. And this is where the instructor would say commence. Kiba would be attacking Naruto with fang over fang or various amounts of jutsu. And Naruto would be counterattacking it with basically his fist. He wouldn't be using no kunai, no smoke bombs and nothing like that. And Naruto would just say, well, to make it fair, since it's two of you, there should be two of me. And he, Naruto would make two shadow clones. Well, one shadow clone and it would be, just be two Naruto's. And this is where Naruto would look at Kiba and say, what will you do now? when I'm fighting at full power because I don't hold back. And Naruto's eyes would be just red, like full red, like you see in this picture. Well, like you see in the Baki anime, not the picture. In the Baki anime, he got, his eyes would glow red as he appeared right behind Kiba and punched Kiba dead in the ribs. And then he grabbed Akuma, Akamaru and slung him into the wall, basically knocking Akamaru out cold. Then his clones would double team Kiba, sending off a barrage of punches hard heavy punches to Kiba. Kiba would be doing his best to dodge and trying his best to dodge but the attacks just kept hitting him and they were so heavy and they dealt so much damage to a point where Kiba felt a punch go to his left side breaking two ribs and then an elbow to his jaw, a punch to his like left jaw, an elbow to the head and a knee to the chest and a front kick to the face. Kiba would go flying and he would spit up blood and a tooth out of his mouth. Kiba would be looking at Naruto, and Naruto is just standing there, puts his leg down and saying, Is that all you have? I barely broke a sweat. I thought you said you were going to be top dog. Right now you're on the ground like a little bitch. Anyway, whatever that bullshit you were just spouting out your mouth, I'm going to show you that was nonsense. As Naruto looks at Kiba and he smiles, You're in danger, boy. You don't even know it. Naruto rushed Kiba and punched him up into the air. Kiba couldn't even move any inches of his body as his brain was just hitting each part of his skull fast. He's up in the air and Akamaru is knocked out cold. Akamaru is not going any further in this battle. He's basically out. Naruto jumps up into the air right behind Kiba, punched him in the side so many times and grab, and then Naruto grabbed his clone and threw it at Kiba and the, did, and the clone did a backflip and kicked Kiba right into the face, sending him down towards the ground with a big crash. Naruto would kindly land on the ground and see Kiba out cold and the practice would say Naruto wins. This is people. This would pique a lot of people's interest in the tuning exam. Is Naruto just took out Kiba relatively easy with no battle damage, no scars, or nothing like that. Naruto would raise like people would raise an eyebrow saying, "What kind of training has this kid put himself through? He's possibly on the level of Gara, but only if they knew that Naruto is far beyond Gara. He's far beyond what Gara could ever think about strength." And Naruto would walk away, and this is where Naruto. 
See, Naruto didn't kill Kiba as he views him as someone who's weak. And Kiba really didn't push Naruto any further than what he could because after Naruto knocked Akamaru out, Kiba felt nothing but fear as he was fighting two Naruto's on his own and was incredibly outmatched. And Naruto was just enjoying himself beating the shit out of Kiba. Now, the Neji versus Hinata fight would go the same way, but this time, before Neji could kill Hinata, Naruto would jump down there and right hook Neji dead in the face, sending him to the ground hard. Like, sending, like the right hook drug Neji to the ground and sending him to the crashing into the ground. And this is where Naruto would pick up Hinata and yell for the medics, putting her on the stretcher and they basically taking her away. Naruto would look at Neji and say, and say, you, you, I see you as someone who's strong. See, you have these ideals that destiny, destiny makes you strong. Destiny makes you powerful. Destiny this, destiny that. Well, screw that shit. Destiny has nothing to do with how strong a person becomes, what kind of training they've done, or what kind of blood genetic they have. Destiny does not describe or basically show off a person's skills. Of course a person can be born a prodigy and learn stuff very quickly. But as this destiny thing goes, I'm gonna show you Neji. That this so-called destiny that you have made yourself believe in is just a bunch of bullshit. Because what you did to your own family, well, that's kind of low. Even for someone of the Hyuga clan. As Naruto would walk away, he wouldn't do the whole blood thing like that. But he would just look back at Neji saying, we're going to meet in the finals. And the rest of the, our, the tuning exams would go just the way it did in canon. But only this time, Naruto would stop Gara from breaking Rock Lee's right arm and leg. And that would be that. Well, would he? Would he? No, he would not. No, he would not. I'm not even going to say he did because I just contradict myself. He would not stop Gara from breaking Rock Lee's leg and arm because this is the person that did challenge him and was too weak to even fight against him. I almost messed up there. Anyway, so yes, he would let Garo still break Rock Lee's leg and arm. And it, everything would just play out the same. And now we have a month worth of training. But this time, Jiraiya, when, he, when Naruto would meet Jiraiya, Jiraiya would be focusing on teaching Naruto more taijutsu, more skills that Naruto can learn. And Naruto's only interested in fighting with his hand and increasing his speed, combat, and stuff like that. Battle smarts, battle awareness. So Naruto is just going to be sparring against Jiraiya Sensei. And that's probably it. So with all the summoning contract, I mean, Naruto did learn the summoning contract and did make the summoning, but he didn't find use of it because he wouldn't need it in the like final battle of the exams. He wouldn't have use for it at that time. So everything goes the same way it did in the month arc. And now we're in the final arc of the, well, the final time of the, the final battle of the tuning exams. Naruto walks onto the field and the crowd boos and all this kind of stuff. Boo! Boo! All this. And Naruto just... They all are screaming, booing and everything. And Naruto just yells out in a very thunderous roar that shuts everyone up. And this is why Naruto would look at Neji and then he would say to the proctor, hey, Isn't that better? I mean, these guys were booing me and everything, so I just had to shut them up. So, if nothing is going to delay this with all their yapping and mouth breathing, can we get on to this? And the practor would say, okay. Neji would look at Naruto and say, you're going to lose here, Naruto. I'm going to prove to you that destiny can't change anything. Well, your destiny won't be able to change. Naruto would look at Neji and say, are you sure about that? Well, if you're so sure, then you will beat me here, won't you? The practice would say begin, and Naruto would rush Neji, throwing sand in his face, and then delivering a right kick to which Neji basically dodged, and now Naruto and Neji would get into a taijutsu battle. Naruto, on the other hand, would be impressed by the Hyuga style of fighting, and this is where Naruto would basically make fun of Neji, saying, I've basically studied 
all forms of fighting, even your whole Huga style of fighting, as it was very, as it can be very effective. Naruto would get into the stand similar to how Neji is and show off his Huga style techniques and even going as far as besting Neji with his own style of fighting. And Neji would go to say, he would swallow and say, how do you know Huga style fighting? How do you even know this? This is only supposed to be designed in Huga. You ha how did you even get this kind of training or combat? And Naruto would go to just lift up his hand and say, don't worry. I won't be using your moves anymore. I just want to show you that how easily it is to just best you in your own attacks. Naruto would say, hmm, it seems like I have to get serious against you. As I do want this to be over with very fast because this is getting very boring. Naruto would rush Neji and send off a very thunderous shock to his nuts. Yeah, Neji just got punched in the nuts hard. And Neji falls to the ground, screaming in agony, just his eyes rolling to the back of his head. Neji is in pain. This hurts. And Naruto would stomp Neji in the face and wrap his arm around Neji's neck. And then you would see the veins in ne Naruto's arm growing and growing as Naruto's getting ready to kill Neji where he stands. And to the practice say, that's enough. It's over. And Naruto drops Neji on the unconscious body. And Naruto looks at the practor and says, Hmm, why did you do that? You know I was getting ready to kill him. And this would shock a lot of people. They would, <gasps> and Naruto was looking at Neji and Neji was just unconscious. But he would hear this in his subconscious, I guess. He would say that you need to Stop focusing.